the bulging Red River may have already crested lower than initially feared. So you can see how much you've gained, how much. Uh, Jay Olson says he's noticed the receding waters. We determined that the river had, had gone down just slightly this morning, uh, right around 7 o'clock, because of the ice rings that form around the trees. Lower levels, welcome news for weary homeowners and others who've spent days piling sandbags onto dikes. In South Fargo, authorities not only built levees, but also backup walls made out of steel frames, gravel, and cloth. So we can install in about 15 minutes what it would take about 80 man hours to do with sandbags. Miles of these divide the streets. Homes next to the river have only one barrier. I think it makes absolute sense. I'd do the same thing. Uh, if this goes, we're hosed anyway. No point in having you know another 300, 500 homes go too. So, uh, but I'm, I'm confident this is going to hold. Tom Moberg is not bitter about being caught in between. Sometimes the sandbags leak in the dike he and his neighbors help build, but everyone has sump pumps to clear the water out. Everybody here is staying here even though we have mandatory uh, evacuation, so to speak. Next door, Greg Butler is still prepared for the worst. Most of his furniture is propped on buckets in case of flooding. The city of Fargo is being just as cautious. That's the problem with good news. Everybody thinks it's over. And it's not over. There's no question about it. Officials here warn we're not out of the woods yet. The Red River could stay as high as 41 feet from anywhere from three to seven days. That will test the strength and integrity of dikes that were hastily built. John Moan, the Associated Press, Fargo, North Dakota.